Well, thank you, James. That was very, very lucid. Um, I think we're living in a rather dark age of Scottish broadcasting. There was a, a wonderful efflorescence at the in the Thatcher years where nothing, we weren't represented politically, but we had a wonderful cultural resurgimento. And I'm thinking of the arrival of Channel 4, which a lot of uh, Scots benefited from, Scottish production companies. Uh, they, they really jump-started Channel 4, the independent uh, film section, television se uh, sector in Scotland. And then halfway through the 80s, uh, Gus MacDonald came from World in Action, a great cultural commando, and turned over all the tartan feathers in SCV, and created a whole series of programs uh, in all arts, high and low brow, which really got things going. And then the 90s come, and things go downhill. Uh, Channel 4's arts director was Michael Cousteau. He was the man responsible for bringing Peter Brook to an old disused tram shed in the south side of Glasgow with the Malvarata for the Peter Brooks put on, a Hindi epic, which lasted all night if you want to go to see it at night, or three days if you want to see it separately. And that was an incredible um, uh, end of the 80s, really, that, that in a sense created Glasgow 1990, I think, because all these programs, Jerry Merle grew, John McGrath, lots of documentaries I did, other people did. Um, it really put uh, uh, West of Scotland and Scotland generally on the map. And then sadly, uh, Jeremy Isaacs leaves, Michael Gray comes in, uh, Valdemar Yunuzak, a complete ass of himself at one Edinburgh festival uh, by dis denouncing all the Scottish painters, including Alan Ramsay, one of the great Enlightenment artists, painter of Voltaire and so on, David Hume. Um, then went on to uh, uh, trash um, uh, James Craig uh, and the, one of the Beggarstaff brothers, um, who he knew nothing about. And unfortunately, he was also the Channel 4 director of programs, cultural programs. And he didn't like coming to Scotland after that because he got so burnt. So end of Scottish film uh, input in, S in Channel 4. And we've never recovered from that because Stuart Cosgrove is interested in, in Ned culture, uh, uh, reality TV, and um, he thinks that we're all hobbyists, that, that we're passionate to make films on certain subjects. Anyway, moving along, uh, I'm very pleased to uh, say that I have a series of films running at the... At the Glasgow Lighthouse on an architect you may never have heard of, John Lautner, but you'll have seen his work in lots of um, uh, movies like Diamonds Are Forever, Body Double, Charlie's Angels, and so on. In fact, Sean Connery gets dusted up by Bambi and Thumper in Diamonds Are Forever in the Elwood House in Palm Springs, where the, this film I just made, Infinite Space, opened. It was also played at the Glasgow Film Festival. But, and this is why I mention it now, it's completely not mentioned on BBC News that night, and they preferred instead to mention um, one of the, the major low-light topics was uh, litter fines in Glasgow and Edinburgh and pumping birdsong into lavies on the M8 to stop uh, uh, misbehavior and social activity by NEDs. Uh, we live in quite a, a, an appalling culture now because I think very little reflection is done on uh, what Scotland, we, what, what a lot of us uh, participate in. More people go to museums, galleries, concerts and, than they go to football now, but we don't reflect that on television. Um, I have to say that they, they are being shamed into making a film about the kids in Raploch in Stirling, uh, this wonderful El Sestima, which is the Venezuelan Simon Bolivar Youth Orchestra. Uh, they're now learning uh, fiddles at uh, music, violas, and cellos at a very early age. And who knows, maybe in 20 years' time, we'll have a symphony orchestra coming out of Raploch. Well, well, poor children don't deserve poor culture, so I think that's really reassuring. But anyway, I want to go back now to um, how we came in. Um, James mentioned Scotch myths, and we ought to show this because uh, before Channel 4 came, if you were an independent, you had to work in Granada if you lived in Scotland because it was a Scots-Jewish stronghold there, and uh, you could do work down there. We did the Hugh McDermott film, uh, The Hammer and the Thistle. Gus McDonald and I did that. Couldn't possibly have done it in Scotland. Too left-wing, too nationalist, you know, whatever. You couldn't do it. Too boring, perhaps. Um, but Gus very cleverly put it out on August Bank Holiday so the, the very poor ratings we got in England would not be seen uh, So because all programs would probably dip that day. Anyway, we made the, the, this exhibition in a frustration of, of not being able to work on Scotland. Barbara, my late wife, and I lived in uh, Los Angeles for two years and where Brigadoon Doom was really considered to be a documentary of our country. <laughs> and uh, we gathered a lot of kitsch and brought back um, a lot of ephemera and stuff and I'd also got involved with Brian Dunnigan, who now teaches at the National, uh, London Film School, uh, collecting postcards of the Victorian period, realizing a lot of these extraordinary um, 
comedic portrayals of Scotland were actually made in Glasgow or made in Aberdeen and uh, fuel this sort of self-perception of, uh, of, of tartan loonies and so on. But also, very interestingly, a kind of West of Scotland surrealism, which a hen and kilts keep referee better than that. Well, that's really quite strange, and it's picked up by Lex McLean, Chick Murray, um, Billy Connolly, and so on, um, Jerry Sadowitz even, and uh, that wasn't also reflected. Bob Neal is another candidate. So all the, a lot of these films we were able to do for STV, and the first... Uh, uh, Jeremy Isaacs came to the, the Ember Festival sh the screening of, um, uh, sorry, the Ember Festival uh, exhibition of Scotch Miz. And when he saw the, the legless Jimmy at the bar, he said, okay, how much do you need to do this Channel 4 first Hogmanay show? Well, Hogmanay show is gone now, but it was a rather wretched uh, display of tartanry and madness and uh, uh, really highly, too currently embarrassing for most of us. Uh, followed the, the White Heather Club, which was also a bit strange. <laughs> and uh, so I thought we'd bring the first clip. Um, which is uh, Scotch myth, so the great Chick Murray's playing the Byronic figure of a, a pyramid of tartan, and he's addressing a famous Scottish writer. Can we show the first clip? And his Hanoverian highness loved it too. That was King George IV, of course, so besotted by all things Scottish that he resolved to see Sir Walter Scotland in the flesh. And what better Scot to stage manage the event, and the Scot himself, Sir Walter. Sir Walter Scott, Bart, Bard of chivalry and romance. We feel that all the arrangements for this momentous occasion should be directed by that single mind of genius and inspiration to the Scottish nation, the author of Waverley. It was supposed to be a secret. How did they know it was me? Well, it had nothing to do with me, I'll tell you that. Ah, well, we need to find him a crown. Where's the Scots regalia? It's been discovered at Edinburgh Castle. Well, have it buried, and I'll rediscover it. As you wish. That'll need to be a sort of midnight ploy, but I'll manage it. Your secret will be well kept, as usual. Now then, the Highlanders are what you would most like to see. Each clan chief to bring... Half a dozen, no, oh, no, half a score of clansmen to Edinburgh. Mind, Highlandmen of decided respectability, dress and accoutrement to be in proper order. Oh, why, yeah. well, that's understood. Aha, uh -huh. the tartans. Oh, your eyesight's in good shape, Sir Walter, eh? Ah, oh, this is the tartans. Now. Nah. Make sure the plaids are in the proper order and that the weaves of tartan are in accord with some vague historical precedent. In other words, a, a tartan fitting for a king? No. No? No. No, select a handsome check, something in fitting contrast with His Majesty's tones of royal blue. Oh, what about this one here? This is a, a scarlet red. Hmm. What check? Well, it's known as number 137. It's, it's a fraudulent check. Mm. Call it Stuart. Stuart. Just plain Stuart. No. Call it Red Stuart. Oh, that's more appropriate. I Red Stuart. Royal Stuart. Royal Stuart you have? Ancient Royal Stuart. Oh, I like that. Huh? Ancient Royal Stuart it is. Ancient Royal Dress Stuart. Well, as you wish. Ancient royal dress, Stuart. Ancient royal hunting dress, Stuart. Well, oh, there's no doubt about it, Sir Walter. You're a man of words. Ancient royal hunting dress, Stuart. I name it. Then bring a fur at the tartans, and we'll tartan the kingdom. Well, of course, that made uh, the whole of the country tartan conscious in 1822. Um, up there were the clans from the north were reviled, and um, this is a brilliant stratagem of Sir Walter Scott. Oh, that's the next one. Hold that, if you do. Um, uh, so uh, when, I, when I was a kid in Inverness coming to Glasgow in a kilt, it, it was an embarrassment to me of age seven that we have stones thrown at me and called the Keelik and Kilty and all this stuff. Now, of course, we have the tartan army, and we, we're completely relaxed, but it's a very interesting idea that we live in some kind of 